Children at this age face many challenges inside and outside the family. They can understand conception now. They may take being adopted personally or in foster care. Identity can become more complex, asking who am I? Where did I come from? They can begin to fantasize about their birth families if they're not getting any information. They're comparing their birth and their adoptive family if they have memories. So they need help separating that fantasy from reality. What is real? So tips, respect the child's privacy in public, meaning, oh, this is our adopted daughter. Oh, this is our foster child. <laughs> That's private and personal information. Notice and help kids respond to adoption related teasing. Kids are aware of race. Kids are aware of ethnicity. Kids are very aware of differences at this age. Be proactive. Some children may volunteer to share about their stories. Some may not. Wonder with and have parallel conversations while in the car, talking, walking, cuddling. Support the idea again, validating there are many kinds of ways families are formed, including foster and adoptive. This age group being around other families like them, really important. Support groups, events, really supports their self-esteem. When your intuition tells you, when the child appears sad, quiet, active, melancholy, again, remember that observe, watch, and listen. Hmm, this, there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I'm going to be curious about that. When the child experiences a loss before their birthday, on their birthday, I've had parents say, she has everything. We had a, everything set up. And then she ran away and was crying in her room. And a phrase that I say a lot is what's hysterical, we must assume is historical. Something to do with the past, and especially kids who've been in foster care. Where were they last year on their birthday? They were with their family. You know? It's okay to ask. I'm wondering if you're thinking about your birth family. You're thinking about Maria. You're thinking about your brothers. You were with them last year. And the child may say no, or they may say yes, but you said it. There's elephants in the room. Trust me. There's elephants in the room. You bring it out. So there's grief anniversary reactions. Mother's Day, Father's Day can be very emotional for kids. When the subject of birth families comes up in movies or books, have the conversation. Talk about it. Hey, do you ever wonder about, do you ever think about the foster home you lived in? Because totally normal, of course you would. Like Instant Family, great movie, but I wish I made a video. Don't go to Instant Family until you talk about the movie first, because it's going to trigger you and your child. I was in the audience crying. Three seats down from me, there was, he was probably seven. And, and this movie, I'm sorry, 13 and up, 13 and up. He's sitting three seats down and he's like this, crying. I saw a child so alone in their experience. It was daunting to me. Yes, it's one thing he was connecting with the film, but was he prepared? to feel what he was feeling? Did someone talk to him before and after and during feelings? There was a reunion with the mother. Some kids fantasize about that. And here it was on screen. So I have to be mindful of movies now. There's a lot of movies. So if anything has an adoption theme, watch it first, I tell parents. Watch it first. You know, it can be annoying. Um, learn what's important to know in the film so you can prepare your child common questions for this age. What happened? Why was I adopted? Where did I come from? Where did I get my looks? Where do my birth parents live? And do I have siblings? What's my birth mother's name? What does she look like? Now, remember I talked about omission. We're going to give a first name. Right. We live in the world of Facebook, right? <laughs> Kids can type up names and find things right away. Why so are we not telling the last name? Because we don't want a child to facilitate 
contact and be an open adoption facilitator when they're not ready and they don't know how to do any of that. And then they start having a conversation with a birth mother and there's no supervision. That's why if you're not doing the work for them, guess what? They're gonna do it for you probably when they're tween adolescent. So you wanna do it now and be prepared. Her name is, would you like to see a photo? Again, I'm asking the question first. Some kids are not ready to see the photo. It's, I don't know if you've been with kids who've seen a photo because they don't have the cognitive recall, the memory of remembering. It's in there what their birth mother looks like. But if it was pre-verbal, it's unconscious memory. They can't recall it. When they look at a picture of a, their mother for the first time, it is a moment. It is a moment for them. And we want to be there. We want to be available. We want to know that it's the right time. It's not before a night of 10,000 homework, right? Showing this picture to them before a whole week of vacation. So they can really look at the picture, ask questions, because it may trigger a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, a lot of questions that we need to be ready to contain and hold for them. Uh, you can describe her if you know. If you don't know, put that question in the question box. Why couldn't she go to school to learn to be a mom? I tell young kids a lot of the time, you know, some moms and dads look like moms and dads on the outside, but guess what? They're really kids on the inside and they have a lot of growing up to do. And then I go, can a kid take care of a kid? Mm. Kids need to learn how to grow up and take care of themselves. And for that, some kids are okay with that and some kids understand that. Your mommy had a lot of growing up to do. Right. So she made a very difficult decision to have another family to raise you. And that's called an adoption plan. Why didn't my mother want me? Again, here's the egotistic children, the child's blaming themselves. They need to make sense. I believe your birth mother was a good person who wanted you to have a home, a family, and a full life. In her heart, she felt she could not give that to you. So a plan was made for adoption and we adopted you. When you're giving this information, it's hard because there's pain in there. There's pain. I must have been a bad baby for my mother to give me away. There was nothing about you. Again, we're piecing out. There was nothing about you that made your birth mother make a plan for adoption. All babies are wanted. And you needed a mom and a family who can take care of you. And your first mom was not able to give that to you. It's where you put the emphasis. I had one child. She just couldn't understand. So I got a piece of paper out. Because we learned that she said some depression. And so we drew a picture of her. And then I drew a picture of her mom and dad. Stick figures. And then her mom and dad. Because what I learned is that her mommy died. And she was a teenager and she had a lot of big sad feelings about that and then when she became your mommy whoa she really felt sad mm -hmm. she didn't know what else to do but make a plan because she didn't know how to help you with your feelings let alone her own feelings so, so she could have compassion see her mother as a person have respect for her and understand depression and what drives that you want to have some good conversations separate from their story. Like, what is mental illness? Why do people do drugs and alcohol, right? Why does that happen? Or why are there gangs? Because then when they hear that term, they're going to understand the context. What drives that? Let me just show you a book that I love to read with this age group. What makes a baby? This is an egg. Not all bodies have eggs in them. Some do and some not. Inside the egg, there are many stories all about the body the egg came from. And this is a sperm. Not all bodies have sperm in them. Some do and some don't. This, inside this sperm, just like the egg, there are so many stories about the body that this came from. 
when grown-ups want to make a baby, they need to get an egg from one body and a sperm from another. They also need a place where the baby can grow. That's in the uterus. This is a place where a baby can grow. You might think that everyone has a uterus since it has the words you and us in it, but not everyone has a uterus. Just like the eggs and just like the sperm, some bodies have a uterus, some bodies do not. Everybody that has a uterus always has it in the same place, just below the belly button. When an egg and a sperm meet, they swirl together in a special kind of dance. As they dance, they talk to each other. The egg tells the sperm all the stories it has to tell about the body it came from. And the sperm tells the egg all the stories it has to tell about the body it came from. And when their dance is done, they're not two things anymore, they're one. I love this book, very clear. And it really honors, you can have a whole dialogue about this sperm and this egg and what are the stories here? It's a great way to start a conversation. Okay, this is an intervention that I do with kids because kids who tend to get stuck in blaming themselves, the shame witch I call it. The bread on the bottom is your best friend inner voice you that separates you from whatever the problem is that you're blaming yourself about. Turkey, the lettuce, the pickle, the tomato, and the inside is all the stuff, like the information, what happened. And then the bread on top is again, that best friend, inner voice, you, supporting you. And it would be a parent that's hearing a child saying, she just didn't want me, she just didn't want me. Let's reframe that, let's do the shame witch. It sounds like you're being really hard on yourself. You're thinking it's all about you, that it's your fault. So a lot of kids believe it's their fault. It was not about you. It was about the situation, the circumstances. You, so the bread on the bottom, you were born like every other person. You are lovable. All children need to be taken care of. Some adults are not able to take care of anyone. They're still learning how to take care of themselves. It's not that they won't, you, that they couldn't. You were born like every other person, you are lovable. So the next time you hear yourself saying this to yourself, you say, you're a good person, you're doing the best that you can. That's the problem. I'm gonna put the emphasis on that. That was hard. That's hard for me. I'm not going to be hard on myself about that. Books to read six to eight, what makes a baby, contemplating my belly button, the mulberry bird. It's so amazing. It's about conception, birth, how babies are made. Really great book. You don't just hand that. And even though they're starting to learn to read, you go through it with them page by page. So something that I did, I wanted to create a animation for kids called what is adoption it is on my youtube channel you can share it with kids really it's about helping kids that make sense again why did this happen to me and what's the reason what is adoption some families just can't live together so it's necessary to find another family who will love and take care of the children Becoming part of a new family is called adoption. Here are some reasons why families can't live together. Some people are just too young to be parents. They have no experience to raise a child. Some parents want to keep their babies, but their families don't support them. Some moms have a baby, but there's no dad to help her, and she feels like she can't raise the baby because it's really hard to do it all by yourself. Sometimes a social worker or judge decides it would be best for a child to be adopted because some parents may have a serious problem with drugs or alcohol, not been kind to, or even physically hurt their child and need some parent training. Some may have gotten scared and moved away, leaving the baby all alone. Some parents are unable to provide food, clothing, and even a safe place to live. Some parents may have died. Some parents may be in jail for breaking the law. Some may have had a physical or mental illness and need hospitalization and medical care. Remember, it's not that they don't want to parent, they just can't parent, like a child needs. Most times, 
there is a team of people working to help keep the family together. Social workers are helpers for parents and are also there to help the children feel safe and cared for. They will try and help solve problems by creating a family case plan. Sometimes the plan calls for a child to live in foster care with foster parents, while their first parents work on problems with the social worker. But if the problems can't be fixed, an adoption plan is made. An adoption plan is made by the first family and a social worker who collectively decide it is the best thing for the health of the child. A judge then helps to finalize the adoption plan and provides a permanent home for the child. So you see, a social worker is a very important person in adoption because they have to find a family that is best for the child and they are there to be kind and supportive. Even still, sometimes finding a family can take a long time and that's why some kids wait in a foster home, a group home, or with a relative for a while until the parents, social workers, and judge can figure things out. The bottom line is, children need love. When you are adopted, it means you have a new family, a new relationship as a daughter, a son, a sister, or a brother, and you have become a very important part of your new family. It's important because you will be sharing all of life's experiences together, birthdays, holidays, vacations, and so much more. You will have many questions about your birth family, and you have every right to wonder and know the story of your adoption. Ask your parents by making a question box and see what answers you can find and what answers you can hold on to in your questions box. You may have numb feelings. You may have angry feelings. You may have, was this all my fault? Guilty feelings, which brings along sad and confused feelings. All of these feelings are normal because you are grieving the loss of your first family and the grief is also normal. You will need to grieve in order to feel better. There is no right, there is no wrong. Expressing your feelings can sometimes be hard, but the more you can do it, the better off you'll be. Big feelings will come and big feelings will go, like a great big wave, so just go with the flow. Don't push them away, make them your friend, so you can understand your grief and go play again. Remind and tell yourself over and over that being adopted is a very special thing. Out of everyone in the world, it was you that they would bring to their hearts, to their homes, to their whole family too. And the last thing to know, to take deep in your heart, is that you're just a kid. It was never what you said or did that made your first family break apart. You matter! But one thing to remember, you are not alone. There are 1.5 million children currently adopted in the United States. Between 1 to 2 million couples want to adopt a child, and 40% of adopted children are of a different race, culture, or ethnicity than both of their adoptive parents. And 6 out of 10 Americans have personal connection to adoption. Each year there are 135,000 children adopted in the United States. And overall, there are 7 million people adopted in the United States. That's amazing! All of these people were adopted too. Colin Kaepernick, Faith Hill, Jamie Foxx, Run DMC Daryl McDaniels, David Thomas, Wendy's founder, Steve Jobs, Marilyn Monroe, Simone Biles, Sarah McLaughlin, Christian Chenoweth, Ray Liotta, Blondie, Keisha Cole, Liz Fair, and many, many more. You are not alone.